On this episode of How to Make Dinner, I'm making a very festive vegetarian dinner for two. Thanks for joining me today. I thought it'd be fun to do a little dinner for two that could be used as like a Christmas dinner thing or really it's perfect any time of year. For this festive dinner for two, I'm making a really, really lovely mushroom and onion pot pie with like a biscuit top. And I'm also making a uh, roasted kabocha squash with tahini honey mustard dressing. And it's gonna be so nice. That one can be served warm or cold or room temperature. And I'm making a really nice bitter greens and citrus salad to kind of round the whole thing out. So, first things first, let's talk about these pot pies. To make the pot pie filling, all I did was take a whole onion and a whole leek and slice them up and cooked them down in just a little bit of olive oil and salt for about five to eight minutes until they softened. And then I added a whole whack of mushrooms, just regular button mushrooms or cremini mushrooms, whatever you've got, and a, quite a bit of garlic, like three cloves of garlic. And then I cooked those down for another sort of 10 minutes or so till they were really nice and kind of getting really soft. And at this point, it's kind of awesome when you get a little bit of brown bits forming at the bottom because it helps build the flavor. And then into the mushrooms and onions, I added a big splash of red wine. I just had some red wine in a jar from the freezer that I had left over from some night. And I added that in as well as two full tablespoons of za'atar, which is one of my favorite spice blends. It's a Middle Eastern spice blend and it's just pretty good in almost anything, like on chicken, in eggs, like salad dressing, in this pie, it's, it's the best. So I put that in and then I put some either vegetable stock or mushroom stock, whatever you've got, until it was quite kind of juicy. <laughs> and then I just thickened it up with a little bit of a cornstarch slurry. I'll put the whole ingredient list in the description box for you. What I ended up with is this really thick, but not too thick kind of onion and mushroom stew. It's so nice. I mean, this is great for anything. This is gonna be perfect in this pie, but because I made a lot, I'm gonna have leftovers. I'm gonna to toss it with some pasta tomorrow and it's gonna be great. For the crust part of the pie, I actually just made a biscuit dough, like a regular old baking powder biscuit. You could use store-bought puff pastry for this or store-bought any kind of pastry really. I just thought a biscuit dough would be really easy and kind of fun. I'm not getting into how to make the biscuit dough on this episode, but you can just find any biscuit recipe that you like or buy it from the store, no problem. So I'm gonna roll it out a bit thinner than I would for biscuits just cause it's, you know, going on top of this pie. So it's about, I'd say that's about a half inch thick. And then I'm gonna assemble these pot pies in these cute little kind of French onion soup dishes. So I have a cookie cutter that's the perfect shape and size to fit just a perfect little round for these things. How cool is that? So I'm gonna cut them out And then, I don't know, do something with these scraps later. So I'm just gonna load up these little bowls with the stew mixture. I don't know about you, but when I'm thinking about Christmas dinner or any kind of special occasion dinner, there has to be some kind of gravy-like sauce involved and this is perfect for that. You get tons of delicious, really mushroomy, red winey, za'atar flavored sauce. So that's all left over and that's cool with me. Then I'm just gonna stick the little biscuit tops on top of the pies and I've got my oven already preheating to 450 degrees. But first I'm just gonna actually drizzle a little bit of 
whipping cream on top just because I have it left over from something else. You could use an egg wash. You don't have to put anything on top. This just makes it a little bit glossy, which is kind of nice. I'm going to put these pies into a baking dish so that in case there's any overflow, I don't ruin the bottom of my oven. And then I'm going to throw these in the oven. Next is the kabocha squash thing. So all I did was take a whole kabocha squash and cut it into little wedges and then tossed it with some olive oil, quite a bit of salt and some Aleppo pepper, which is just a really nice kind of little bit hot, little bit sweet chili flake. And I tossed that all together really well and I shoved it in the oven at 450 for about 25, 30 minutes. And this is what they look like when they're done. So really nice and golden. What I love about kabocha squash is that you don't have to peel it. The skin takes on the consistency almost of the flesh. Like it's, it's really soft and nice. What does happen sometimes is this, the skin kind of separates from the squash, but that's not happening here. Look how good that looks. I love that. All right. So all I'm going to do with this is make a little dressing to drizzle over. The dressing for this squash is going to be a tahini honey mustard dressing. So I've got some tahini here. If you're not familiar with using tahini, it's kind of amazing, but it's a little bit temperamental. Like right now it looks super lumpy because it's just kind of all clumped up in the container, but it's going to get really nice and smooth as soon as we start adding things to it. So I have some honey here, some nice local fireweed honey. Honey is one of those things that I always recommend spending the extra money on. If you can get a nice local one, it just makes a huge difference. If you do a honey taste test with some friends, like the, the bee or the, like the teddy bear one versus a nice local honey, you'll be blown away by the difference. And I've got some Dijon mustard here. You could use any kind of mustard you like. I mean, even like a German mustard would be really good here. I even considered using horseradish instead of mustard. So it'd be like a honey horseradish tahini dressing, which now I'm kind of wishing I did do that. But mustard and horseradish both have that kind of like heat, that kind of like nasal clearing heat. So they're kind of in the same family for me. Anyway, we're just going to whisk that together. And it's going to get weird and thick at first, but it'll thin out as soon as we add liquid. So I'm going to add a pinch of salt and then just some regular old water. As you add water, it kind of gets creamier and it starts to get really, really nice. Just be patient. I have a whole video devoted to tahini sauces. So check that out if you're looking for more ways to use tahini. Yeah, see, look at that. Ooh, it's so nice. It's, it's getting like thick, but also kind of glossy and creamy. And there's, there are no lumps now. It's nice and silky smooth. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh, that mustard packs a punch. I'm just going to add a bit more salt. All right. So I found a nice serving platter. You know, when it's one or two people, even when it's just me, I love plating things nicely just to, you know, show myself that I care. <laughs> I'm going to take my squash and I might not use all of this. I roasted an entire squash knowing full well that leftover squash is a nice thing to have around. So why not just cook the whole thing, right? And I mean, I'm kind of Jamie Olivering in the way that I'm placing them just a little bit, a little bit random. Some are on their sides, some are facing upwards. I'm going to drizzle my dressing over. Oh, yes. 
And then a couple of final touches. I bought a pomegranate earlier, which I just love, especially this time of year. So there's plenty of debate as to the best way to open a pomegranate. I tend to just cut around the outside and then kind of pry it open so I don't cut through too many of the little beads inside. And then I just do the wooden spoon technique to bang out a bunch of seeds. Make it rain pomegranate seeds, you know? I hope I don't get any on the camera lenses. <laughs> Look at that. And then, just in case you're a crunch lover like me, I've got a few toasted slivered almonds that I toasted the other day. Just scattered those on top. Okay, so this is, in my opinion, a very lovely, really festive dish. What do you think? That's good, isn't it? Moving right along. This is a really nice kind of crunchy, refreshing salad that I seem to make pretty often in the winter time. It's just a combination of Belgian endive, radicchio, some fresh parsley, red onion, and some citrus fruit. You can cut it however you want. I know some people like big giant leaves on their plate, some people don't. So I like something in the middle. So instead of having these whole leaves, I might just cut them all in half. So they're a bit more bite size. Maybe these ones will go in half again. I do like to kind of preserve the shape of leaves though. So like cutting it this way, you know, you still get a bit of the essence of the vegetable, if you will. I'm gonna toss everything in my homemade bowl. Now that the leaves are smaller, I might just cut them in half once. I kind of like a variety of textures as well in salads. So like now that we're down to the heart, the heart is perfectly fine to eat. So I might just cut right through it and then you get like this chunky, crunchy, you know, wedge kind of thing going on. Variety. It's the spice of life, right? All right, and then the radicchio, I mean, I don't know about you, but radicchio always looks super sad in the grocery store. So you kind of have to give it a little love. Always cut off that brown end because it's gonna be very brown. Not a lot of people buy these things, I guess, that's why. And then I like to do the radicchio a little bit thinner so it's more of a shred. And I might only use half of this one actually. And because these greens are both quite bitter, they benefit a lot from sweet additions, which is why I like using citrus. Fresh parsley, flat leaf, I'll just grab a bunch. And then I like to leave it pretty whole, but just kind of do a rough chop just in case there's any giant stems in there. I love parsley and red onion. So now we've got like crunch, we've got watery crunch, we've got bitterness. Now we're gonna have a little heat from the onion and tons of nice color already. I'm one of those people that could eat like, I feel like I could just eat a whole salad made out of just red onion. Like, I, I'm not afraid of it, but <laughs> a lot of people are not into it as much. So just use however much you think your people will enjoy. And then comes the citrus. Citrus-wise, I've got a grapefruit and an orange. Two of the greats. <laughs> And then I just do segments. So cutting the top off, cutting the bottom off. You've got a flat surface. Ooh, this looks like a really nice grapefruit. 
And then following the curve of the grapefruit so that you don't lose too much flesh. Same with the orange. So I usually just cut the segments directly into the bowl. You could use a paring knife for this. It's actually probably a better idea. But you just have to cut on either side of the little membranes. And you don't have to be this fussy. I mean, you could definitely just peel it and then slice it in half and then slice it into kind of half moons and leave the bits in between. But, you know, I don't do this very often, so I figure what better time than now. It's really nice if you can find blood oranges just because they're so gorgeous in here. Okay, and then for the dressing, all I'm gonna do is squeeze a bunch of this juice over everything. <laughs> and then a little bit of any oil of your choice. This is some nice sunflower oil, just a drizzle, don't need much. And because the citrus isn't very sharp, in the dressing, I like to add a little bit of extra sharpness, so I've got this tarragon vinegar that I quite like. I'm gonna drizzle a tiny bit of that over. And also because the citrus isn't very sharp, I'm gonna add a fair bit of salt, because I'm really relying on the salt to give this like strong flavor, I guess. Not salt flavor, but really to just draw out all the flavor. I know it seems really weird to a lot of people, but the best way to toss a salad is really with your hands. So get them real clean and just get in there. And I hope you don't have any cuts because the oranges are gonna sting if that's the case. This is, uh, this is really a game changer with salad tossing. <laughs> Use your hands. It means everything gets really coated, the salt gets sprinkled, and it means that you don't have to like make a dressing ahead of time, you know, in a jar or a, a bowl, you can just make it right here in the in the salad. If you wanted to add something crunchy to this, like nuts or seeds, like hemp hearts or almonds or whatever, totally your call. Okay, that's it. Time to get the pot pies out of the oven. So, <laughs> look at these guys. Oh, I love them. I love them, look at them. Look at those biscuit tops. So I'm really glad I put the baking tray underneath because they have leaked everywhere. But I'm very pleased with how these came out. So that's pretty much our dinner here. Let me just get these out of the tray. I want a nice plate. So I consider this to be a bit of a grazing style dinner. I feel like we'll start by picking at the squash and then we'll maybe, you know, let the pot pie cool down a bit, dish up some salad, have some pie. It'll be great. All I smell is mushrooms and red wine. This is my festive dinner for two, perfect for Christmas or really any time you wanna have a nice special dinner at home. If you're wondering what's for dessert, you'll have to rewind back to last week's episode where I made my family's favorite trifle. That's what we're having. I put some in the freezer because I couldn't eat it all. <laughs> so we're busting it back out. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you take something away from this episode. I hope I've given you some good ideas on what to make, some plant-based ideas for Christmas this year, perhaps. Can't wait to see you again next week. I hope you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And I'll see you then.